Okay, so we watched Safe Space again. Going in on the concept of safe spaces, as we get to later episodes, we see, you know, Randy says that, you know, safe space is the most precious, special place on a college campus. Um, you know, and you can't cross that line when he, when he teams up with um, Caitlyn Jenner and uh, 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 Mr. Garrison. And uh, Princess Victoria, uh, Princess, Principal Victoria, you can't cross that. And then he's like, "Whoa, they, cross, you know, they, cross. how'd you do that?" You know, um, kind of, you know, again, mocking the concept of safe spaces, and not the essence of what they are and what they represent and where they're needed, but that the fact that there are so many safe spaces created for people who aren't really victims, and that's what he's, they're trying to say is that people who post stuff online and get and get bullied because of the stuff that they post or they get you know negative comments or 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 whatever do they deserve a safe space and can the internet be a safe space in the eyes of man trey fuck no it, it cannot be a safe space because then what happens is censorship and that's what all this is butters becomes the censor he censors all of reality you know at least from their perspective, and they think there's something toxic and deadly in that, and that's why Butters gets sick. Okay, so we'll move on, talk a little bit about gentrification, um, and we'll move our way through some of the episodes. Um, so, we already know what gentrification is. In the United States, it has gone up like a motherfucker. It has gone crazy. So, um, at least 11%, but some numbers suggest higher, upwards of 15% increase since the 1990s in terms of Let's find a neighborhood, let's make it pretty, and let's make it expensive. And we see this in South Park with Soda Sopa um, and, and the, 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 the uh, City Pot Town and all that stuff, okay? Um, hey, guess what? The beautiful city of Portland has the highest gentrification rate, okay? 58% of all lower-income neighborhoods in that city have been gentrified. You know it. If you've been in Portland, you know it. If you're from Portland, you know it. And if you're from specific neighbors, neighborhoods in Portland, you know it. Okay. In uh, Washington, D.C., there's been 54 neighborhoods that have been gentrified since 2000. These are just some cities that have just had like more of it going on. Okay. Um, and guess what? In those neighborhoods, you know, population increases and whiteness increases you know, kind of goes back to what I was talking about in the last class, okay? So what are the good and bad, right? I've asked you to read articles about PC. I've asked you to read articles um, about gentrification. I kind of show you both sides of the argument, for and against either. And um, so what do studies say that are good about gentrification? You, what, what, gentrification is good? What, no way. Well, the argument is there's more money in a community and this, there's just more wealth. Uh, which leads to more tax income in a specific neighborhood. There's more tax revenue. Um, it helps to preserve historic buildings. That's a, that's a thought. Uh, look at like downtown Springfield, for, for example, or downtown Eugene. Um, education increases because, you, again, you have more money to put into community schools, into community education. Uh, crime goes down, theoretically. That's, that's, again, debatable, but that's the theory. Um, and there's supposedly studies try to show that there's less displacement, meaning um, people who have inhabited that neighborhood or those areas for generations still are able to live there. Now, that may or may not be the case, okay? Uh, what's the bad on the flip side of the coin? Studies also say, guess what? Housing costs go up. Neighborhoods become segregated within that community or that community itself becomes a segregated area. Um, there's lots of displacement. I mean, look at the uh, Abina neighborhoods in Portland. I mean, you just look at like other, the other cities, right, where, you know, communities, specifically communities of color who've inhabited an area for generations, um, you know, they get displaced, moved, pushed out, okay? Whether, it, you know, usually through some form of economic, uh, you know, systematic racism, okay? Uh, 
again, there we go, systemic violence. So you start to have, you know, it's you know, property taxes go up. It's harder for um, typically people of color in those communities to get loans, um, you know, for home improvements or for whatever, to pay their taxes, whatever it is. Um, and yeah, these neighborhoods become overcrowded um, and there can actually be an increase in crime because if there's maybe per more perceived wealth or more discrepancy within the community, meaning uh, you have people who have l less money, who are maybe, you know, who are part of maybe the original community, and you have people with lots of money, more affluent in the same area, may lead to actually more crime. Um, and I've seen this firsthand. I lived uh, in a part of Connecticut, right near a city called Bridgeport, which at the time had the highest murder rate in the United States, which was right across the bridge from Fairfield County, which is like one of the most expensive places to live in the United States. And I also lived right outside of Hartford, which had East Hartford and West Hartford. West Hartford was where like um, the Kennedys have a house and it's quite affluent. In East Hartford, you know, when I was there, it was, it was rugged. Let's just say a lot, of, a lot of gang violence, a lot of gang wars, <clears throat> a lot of poverty a lot of police brutality, um, and these communities are right next to one another. And, and that also does tend to increase crime. It also increases policing and protectionism of the, um, you know, typically the wider or more affluent uh, parts of those, of those communities, um, et cetera. Gentrification is violence. This is from one of the weedings. Couched in white supremacy, it is systematic, intentional process of uprooting communities. Okay, and you know, regardless of what studies show, this seems to be the general the general trend is that gentrification of neighborhoods, urban development, the, it tends to benefit a select few people. Okay, so naughty ninjas. Guess what happens? South Park becomes intolerant of the police, particularly Officer Bar Brady. Okay, um, the ninjas take over uh, Soda Sopa, <laughs> but they look like ISIS members. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so ridiculous. The residents of South Park use brutality against the homeless. Okay, so what starts to happen is you start to see gentrification take place. You start to see displacement. You start to see poverty. Hey, Randy Marsh in the Marshes can no longer afford to live in South Park. What he created and brought to, um, you know, the town, he can no longer afford to live there. Um, all the homeless move to the shitty part of town where the Whole Foods is. Um, and, you know, it's a pretty epic satire. Um, you know, on, on many things, on police brutality, uh, systemic racism, and also like what, what we could call trendy progressivism um, in the sense of like trying to be progressive thinking in order to be cool, in order to be hip, in order to be respected, in order to be thought of as not country, not backwoods, which is one of the reasons why South Park in general wants to bring whole foods. So that's part of you know, the main story um, in that, which gets us to sponsored content, which you watched outside of class. Sponsored content is the set up episode. It sets up the final um, two episodes and completes the arc. So, I mean, we have a few episodes in there, like um, the Yelp one and uh, Craig times, uh, Tweak times Craig or whatever, um, which is a super funny episode. But it has very little to do with the arc. That's kind of why I skipped around a little bit. But sponsored content. Um, this is a in, in pretty incredible satire on, on, on online advertising. This is where we really start to see the online ad part make, make a play uh, in, 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 in the arc. Um, and obviously political correctness. And then we have media censorship, which is a major part. So PC is pretty much on blast the whole time. Um, you know, PC principal, uh, you know, uh, this is where he gets a little bit exposed in some ways, okay? And then we find out also that Leslie Myers is an ad. And here's the deal, like, Jimmy, 
right, who's run the South Park newspaper, you know, who's never taken ads, he's never accepted ads in his paper, finds out he has a superpower where he on, only he can tell the difference between online advertisement, or he can only, he can tell the difference between an ad and, um, and content. And there's this whole great thing, you know, that goes into like, you know, how people have tried to um, avoid advertisements throughout history, and then how ads have always figured out ways around that. And finally, you know, <laughs> ads have um, become people. You know, that's the last step, right? It becomes like promoted content, clickbait, whatever, which we start to see in this. Um, but then it becomes people, and that's like the final step, you know, here. You some pretty interesting PC stuff. Um, <laughs> Jimmy calls uh, PC principles policy uh, retarded. Um, and this brings out a whole, uh, a whole issue in the episode um, where Jimmy basically says that uh, PC principle is an ableist in the sense of like he favors people with disabilities. And, and in fact, you know, he is, he, he is um, you know, biased in, in, in that sense. And then we have the whole Uncle Abel thing, which is uh, referring, is making a reference to an Uncle, an Uncle Tom, if you know, if you know what that is. Um, so an Uncle Abel is a, is a, is a play on that. Um, but, you know, Jimmy challenges PC principle and he puts political correctness on, on the defense. And we find out what this PC stands for. It stands for crushing puss or pussy crushing. <laughs> So ridiculous. <laughs>